Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I am back with another What Would Kelly Make? And today we are going to be practicing our watercoloring. Um, so of the parcel that I got, the one that I ended up choosing was the Wild Rose Studio. Uh, the parcel had this snowman stamp set in it, which I just thought was completely adorable. And it also had um, winter cottages. And I just felt like they would lend themselves really well to watercoloring. So there, I just, I can, I can just imagine endless amounts of cards that I can make with this Winter Cottages set. I just love it. There's like a little church and a little house and they're adorable. So anyway, I'm working on Canson watercolor paper and I'm stamping in Distress Ink. I'm stamping in Distress Ink, very light color. This is Antique Linen because Distress Inks react with water. And so when I do the watercoloring over top, that ink will just blend in and it'll give me a no line look, even though I didn't do it with no lines. Uh, I did stamp it twice because watercolor paper is pretty textured and I wanted to make sure that I was going to be able to see everything, especially their facial features. And then I picked the small little house cottage that was like set off in the background for a uh, perspective so I could fill up my whole card. Um, the other images I really, really loved, but they were just too big um, to put on the same card with this large snowman stamp. So I stamped that twice and then I have just a paper towel. I have a number two round brush from the Silver Brush Company, two containers of water. One of them you can see is already dirty because I already filmed the technique video. And then I have a palette here and I bought my, these are Daniel Smith watercolors. I bought mine in the tubes and so I've just squeezed out a little bit into this palette and I just leave them in here. I put the, I close the lid over top of it. Um, they dry out in there and that's why you saw me like dropping little droplets of water to just kind of re-wet my inks. And, um, or you could do it with a spray bottle, either or, whichever works for you. This is just a little bit, I guess, cleaner for me. So basically what I'm doing is, this is mixing up my color and I'm going to pick up the color. I'm going to blot off the base of the bristles onto a dry paper towel, baby wipe, whatever you have handy. And then I'm just going to put the color down where I want it to be the darkest. So now when I did it that time, I didn't blot enough moisture off of the brush. And so I've just put down way too much water. That's okay. Watercolors are actually really forgiving. So you can just blot it up with that paper towel and it's not even going to be like it was ever there. So again, I'm just putting down that color where I want it to be the darkest. And originally I started off with a little bit of a, um, a lighter blue and it just wasn't enough. So after I put down the color, I'm going to clean off my brush, take clean, clear water, again, blot the bristles, and then I'm going to put the clean water in the clean area. So like on the snowman's belly, I'm starting in the white area, and then I'm going to take the water to the pigment. And this is just going to blend out that edge and make it softer. Um, if you start in the area that has the color, you're just going to drag that pigment throughout your entire piece which usually you don't want to do. That's not going to be enough control of where your color goes. And again, this is just, um, it all depends on the kind of look that you like. I am going for a very controlled, a very, um, what they call tight versus loose. Um, this is a very controlled watercolor. So I'm just building up that pigment. That's two things that I really, really struggled with of watercoloring. And I jokingly call this adult watercoloring because I'm like using legit watercolors and not just like distress inks. Um, not that you can't legit um, watercolor with distress inks because you totally can. But the reason I differentiate between the two is because typically when I'm doing watercoloring with distress inks, I'm just like slapping it on. It's a background. I'm not trying to really do anything with an image. And that's really how I'm most comfortable watercoloring. This is a little outside my comfort zone, but I'm a huge fan of all of us kind of just pushing past our boundaries and doing something that makes us a little bit uncomfortable because that's how you're going to learn things. And then as you get good at that, that's also how you're going to gain confidence in your card making, which again, huge proponent of. You should be confident in what you're doing. I guarantee you whatever you're doing is, is beautiful. So that is my, the one thing. I always just felt like I was doing it wrong. Um, I couldn't get the results that I wanted. I would get very, very frustrated. And so I found that with detailed image like this, really, really controlling it, 
um, controlling that color just has made me so much more comfortable. The second thing that I had a, a real struggle with with watercoloring is I was always using too much water. Always. I was putting way too much water down. I had no control um, over where that pigment was going and it would just leave me feeling very frustrated. When I'm putting down this water, it is a super, super light sheen. That's it. It dries in like 10 seconds. Now this is all dry now and I'm going back in and just kind of deepening up those shadows, which is something else that you can do. So I haven't added any, like it's the same color that I was using before, but because watercolors are transparent, they'll, they'll build up on each other. So I can go back in with the same color and put it just in the deepest, darkest parts and I'm not going to blend this out. You don't ever have to blend it out. I, I should have said that in the beginning. You don't have to. If that if you like really hard lines, that's totally fine. I wanted kind of a combination of the two. I wanted that soft blended look, but then I also wanted there to be definite shadows. And I think that that's really pretty. So here I've colored all of the snowmen. Now they are white. We've just added the shadows. And right now they look pretty blue, but we're going to go in and add um, more colors. And as we add more colors, those white snowmen are really going to start to look like they're actually white and not like they're blue. So I am using, um, when I bought my watercolors, I picked up the, oh, I can never say, you ever, you ever look at watercolor names and wonder just who's naming these? Probably the same people who are naming nail polishes. Um, so this is Quidacridone Rose and it is a little bit more pink. So in order to get a true red shade, which is what I wanted, um, I actually mixed it with a little bit of, I can't even say it. I said it one time successfully and that's all I got in me apparently, quidacridone gold. So the mixture of the two, and I definitely used more rose than gold, gave me more of a, a true red color. So here I started off by um, putting down a little bit of color, blending that out, and now I'm trying to get some shading. Because see, because I'm a colorist and I'm like Copics or where my heart is, I want to do kind of the same things that I do with Copics. And sometimes that comes back to bite me. So basically I started trying to shade this way too early and you can see I just have one solid red hat. I have no differentiation whatsoever. That's my own fault. Um, I wasn't patient enough. So I'm just going to leave it to dry and I'm going to come back to it in just a little bit. For this scarf, I'm going to add shading to the left and the right, and then I'm just going to keep building up that shading on the sides. Where that area is wet, you can keep um, just adding pigment, and it'll keep mixing together. I'm not worried about the center quite yet. I'm just going to add that color to the sides, and then I'm going to go in with that clean, clear water, and I'm going to put it down in the center, and I'm going to make sure that center is good and, and um, saturated. And I don't mean bubbled up. I mean just the area is, is damp. Just that sheen. That's all we're looking for. If your water is bubbling up, it's too much water. Um, and then I'm going to, what I did was take it out to the edges of that red. And I'm just letting the water do the work. I'm letting it kind of do its own thing. And I'm just going to, when I want to add more shading, because clearly I don't want him to have a red and white scarf. I want him to have a red scarf. So is I want to add more shading. I'm just adding it to the same spots, those outside edges. That little hat on the left has dried and now I can go back in and add shading there. So you see me kind of working back and forth. That happens a lot in watercolor because you have to wait for some areas to dry before you can work on them again. You can't work on two areas um, next to each other that are wet. The reason that I'm can do it with this scarf and this hat besides the fact that there is a minuscule little area between them um, is that they dry so quickly because we are using next to no water. So for the darkest part of that, any of these reds, I am going in and shading with the, um, what is it? It's permanent, it's permanent brown. It's permanent brown and um, I am using that with just a little bit of the uh, rose and you can't see it. I apologize. My palette's too big to fit on the camera and still be close enough for you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So sacrifices had to be made. I figured it was better to leave the palette off than to leave the coloring off because, well, isn't that what you're here for? 
Um, so I have sped this up now. I showed you guys in real time the snowmen part, you know, the majority of the scarfs. This is a very long process. Um, I didn't really mind it. Normally with watercoloring, I get really frustrated because I'm like, why is this taking so long? My child's going to be in college by the time I finish this one card. Um, but again, that was my own error in using just too much water because it should not take that long to dry. It, it shouldn't. And when I did this, um, the areas were really drying really quickly. And again, as I'm you know, doing each individual area, I'm going back to the other ones and adding in shading. So I let this hat on the right dry and now I'm going to go back in and start adding some shading where that hat's kind of falling over the other one. Um, so I want that part, the, the back part where the hat's falling over to be a little bit darker than the front. This snowman's uh, head is also kind of like nestled up underneath the other snowman's. And so I wanted that part of the hat to be darker for this the scarf on the left hand side um, that I'm doing the adding the more shading um, with that mixture of the permanent brown and, and the cordacridone rose. Um, I'm also doing the berries on his hat and for the berries on his hat I basically just filled it in with the red because they're so small they're so tiny. Um, I filled it in uh, with the lightest red and then I went back in and added a little bit more shading and then I used the darkest color to just do little half circles to kind of separate them from each other. Um, another one of my frustrations in watercolor was that I had a really really hard time keeping everything kind of separated in a no line coloring look. I have the same problem with Copics and no line coloring. I get um I don't know, I get nervous, like that little bold black outline is my little security blanket and I need it. I don't know what happens when um, I don't have the bold black outline. You see me drop my uh, paintbrush there? Yeah, I'm professional. <laughs> I dropped my paintbrush probably, I don't know, three or four times while I was doing this. I have no idea why, why it just like slipped out of my hand and thankfully like there wasn't any pigment on it. The only other time in my life where I just dropped everything was when I was pregnant. When I was pregnant with my son, I don't know what happened to my coordination, um, but it left. It left the building for the full 10 months. I dropped everything all the time. My my poor husband uh, was just paranoid, just absolutely terrified I was going to fall while I was pregnant. I don't know why that was something that just got stuck in his head, but it was. And um, so the one, well, Okay, so we were at a party and I dropped a cup of coffee. This this will give you some indication of what my state of mind was. We were at a party. I was in the kitchen. Um, my nephew, I think, was opening gifts in the other room. And my husband asked my brother-in-law, where's Kelly? And so he kind of like peeps his head in. I have dropped a cup of coffee. Thankfully, the, the cup didn't break because it wasn't even my cup. It was my sister-in-law's cup. I felt bad. Um, but it, I was cleaning up the, the coffee. And so he goes... Uh, my brother-in-law looks back in the room and he goes, she dropped a cup of coffee, she's cleaning it up. And my husband's first question is, is she crying? <laughs> because I was just like, your hormones are crazy. You're, you cannot be held responsible for anything that you do while you're pregnant. Um, but anyway, so I was working day shift and I had to get up at like 4.30 in the morning. And the night before I had just really wanted hot chocolate. My son's birthday is in May. So I was super pregnant in the winter months. And so the night before, I really wanted hot chocolate, and I make my hot chocolate with milk. Some people make their hot chocolate with water. I don't. I make it with milk. And so I had left. I was tired. I wanted to go to bed. I left the cup sitting in my craft room the night before. Side note, let's talk about these little white areas. So you can see that I'm shading the their hats and um, their little, what are, are they, little puff balls? I don't know. I'm calling them little puff balls. That's what I'm calling them. Um, I'm shading them with a, a light-ish purple. The reason that I chose to do purple instead of blue is because I wanted to, there to be some differentiation between the snowman bodies and their hats. And you can really shade white with, I mean, you can do gray, you can do blue, you can do purple. Um, those are all just kind of colors that are pretty natural in shadows of items that are white. So that's why i decided to go with a slightly different color is because I wanted them to stand out from one another. I didn't want them to all look like the same color. Um, so anywho, 
back to the story. So the next morning I get up at 5.30 in the morning. I realize that I have left this hot chocolate sitting out all night long. And so I pick up the cup of hot chocolate. My husband's in bed sleeping. Pick up the cup of hot chocolate and I am going to walk into my kitchen. Now, I don't, I still to this day do not know what happened. I didn't trip. I didn't fall. I didn't bump into anything. Literally just walking down the hallway, I just dropped, just dropped it. Just whoo, let it go. And the way that the, so the mug didn't like hit the ground and like dump over. The mug hit the ground perfectly on the bottom, which caused the contents of the mug to shoot directly up into the air. So now I told you I made my hot chocolate with milk, right? I told you that. So it's like warm curdled chocolate milk sloshes up all over our wall, all over the ceiling, all over my face. It's in my hair. Um, I didn't even, I was like, I didn't even know what happened. I was just standing there in, in utter disbelief of <laughs> basically what just occurred. And my husband, I told you, was paranoid that I was going to fall when I was pregnant. So he hears the cup hit. He thinks I've fallen. He like rockets out of bed, comes running into the hallway. And here I am standing covered in, in curdled hot chocolate. Um, just like, I didn't, I'm, yeah, like dead, like I didn't even know what was going on. I didn't even know what to say to him. So then I'm like, try, I feel terrible. I'm trying to clean it up. I'm like on a chair trying to wipe off the ceiling. He comes around the corner and he's like yelling. He's like, what are you doing? Like you are, you are like seven months pregnant. Get off that chair. I will get it. And I just felt really bad because he had to clean up my mess because I just dropped everything all the time. So anyway, fun story. Um, so as I was going through um, pretty much all of the coloring. I, I did everything the same. So I laid down the color, blended it out with the clean, clear water, and then would go back in and add more shading, blend that out, um, and just continued on down the line. Uh, one of the things that I really like about this um, particular company, and this is the first stamp sets I've ever tried by them, and I really, really like them, uh, but this Wild Rose Studio, they um, they color their packaging. So like you can see the snowman already colored on the package. Now I did not go with the same colors that are on the package. I kind of switched it up a little bit, but at the end of it, so I did the, the red, the green and the blue, and I really was kind of at a loss for the next color. And so I happened to glance over at the packaging and the packaging is colored in pinks and purples. And I was like, oh, purple would be really pretty. I can totally use that. Um, so yeah, yay for them giving you coloring ideas. While we're on the hat, um, I just, I totally think this hot top hat is totally adorable, but I wanted it to have like a highlight in the center. So I'm adding the shading to the left and the right. I'm also adding the shading underneath the brim of his hat. And I'm being careful to leave the actual brim alone right now because I don't want them to mix together. I want them to be, uh, have a very clear separation. But one of the things that I wanted to know about this, I'm using the Lunar Black to color the hat. And a lot of the blacks, blues, dark purple, so your darker colors are what they call granulated. And basically what that means is as they're drying down, there is a little bit of texture to them, which, um, so I, I mean, they are smooth but they look slightly different. That granulation makes them look slightly different. And I think it's beautiful. Um, I have a tendency to use more um, blues. Though, I mean, that just is, that's my wheelhouse. That's what makes me happy. But so just so you'll notice what, as the um, ha uh, hat, I wanted to say house, he's not got a house on his head. I mean, this isn't Wizard of Oz. Um, the hat on his head, as it dries down, you'll start to see some of that granulation um, which is just, I think it's gorgeous. So for the actual brim, I was very, very nervous about losing my highlight. So I've added the shading to the very back of the brim, and then I'm using really minimal water to kind of bring that forward. On the right-hand side, I added some super dark shading underneath the brim. There's like a little line drawn there uh, on the actual stamp, and I just kind of extended that a little bit to give it a more round appearance. Uh, adding some more black to the actual hat because when you're coloring something black, it really should have some black in it. Um, you, it will give the appearance of black without a ton of it. You can do it with grays, um, but the 
adding in, even if it's just a line of black, really helps bump up that contrast. While I'm waiting for this hat to dry so I can do the band, I am going to start filling in their eyes, their buttons, and their smiles. So this is why, one of the reasons, many reasons why, I'm using a number two round brush. The point on this brush is so fine. I literally could do their eyeballs and their smiles. And I'm not even a competent watercolorist. Like I just used very minimal water and I had I didn't have a hard time at all. If you are super nervous about like, hey, I've gotten this far in this painting and I there's no way I'm risking it, just use a colored pencil. Um, it will, it'll be the, it'll, I promise you, nobody will really notice the difference. Um, I would not recommend using a marker. I made this mistake. This is a funny story. Um, I So I did some no-line coloring. This was probably like two years ago. And I wasn't really comfortable with it, but I was like, I'm going to give it a shot. And I did a little girl. Um, so I did this little girl and I colored her all no-line. But then when it came to her face, um, she had no facial features because I did the no-line look. So I was like, well, I'm just going to fill her facial features in with like a fine line pen and it should be good. It was not good, guys. It was so, I made the child look like a monster. I like, I sent it to one of my girlfriends and she was like, mail me that card right now so I could have it forever because I have no idea how you made that girl look ugly when she's so cute. And I was, <laughs> um, so it was hysterical and I, I'm always open to constructive criticism. So, I mean, it was just fun. She, uh, she wasn't being mean. She was just being my friend and being honest with me. And I love her for that. But it was it was hysterical. So I would not recommend using a, a, a pen or a marker to, to fill in any facial features, especially on something that you've done no line because it can go south. So for um, this little background scene here, I wanted to do, I wanted the tree to have some multiple colors in it. I also wanted it to have some white areas where maybe some snow was kind of hanging on to it. So I used a combination of a rulian, which is a yellow, mixed with some sap green. Then I used the sap green kind of um, unadulterated. And then I also added in a little bit of phthalo turquoise. Um, but I have no idea why I bought, like, I bought this whole tube because I was just like, look at all the pretty colors. Um, and I just love the turquoise and I figured, you know what, it'll, it, I bought the tube and I paid for it. So it'll make me use it. Um, even when I don't necessarily like, am not feeling particularly confident about my watercoloring. So I'm working kind of each individual section all at the same time. So I'm bouncing around from tree to tree, back to the cabin, back to the trees, um, just giving everything a, a chance to dry. I did want to make my cabin white. So I'm shading it with like the same blues that I used for the snowman bodies. The way that the cabin is drawn is there's a front and then there's a right-hand side. So that right-hand side um, I made darker so that it will look like it is to the side. That's just one lighting or shading is one of those things. Um, once you get a rough grasp of it, so like I made the roof a little bit darker, but then I did um, the whole side of the house in that blue color. And then I made sure that I added um, some pretty heavy shading on the side of the roof. So once this was all done, I wanted to put some background in the color. So now the background in the color, Kelly, really, some color in the background. <laughs> wow. Um, some color in the background. And so I'm using uh, kind of a, a mixture of that same blue. I just mixed up a lot more and I drew myself in as like a secondary hill and I laid it down. I'm doing the same thing that I did with the images, guys. I laid down the color and then I went in with clean, clear water and kind of brought it out. I went back in with some color and then, you know, went back in with clean, clear water and kind of like dragged it out, um, going around those areas that I had already watercolored. And I just went back in um, for the hill just on the underneath of it just to smooth it out, just to smooth out that line. And then I'm going to do the same thing, adding a little bit of shading underneath the snowman, um, same way that I, I did everything else. So I was actually really pleased with the way that the card came out, um, and I'm glad that I tried it. And I hope that even if you guys aren't comfortable with watercoloring, this will be something that you try as well. If you don't have watercolors, don't stress. You can totally use Distress Inks. 
um, the oxides or the regular inks. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them. I When I say adult watercoloring, it's just me joking. Um, so that is the whole card. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will be back next month for the next installment.